going to show you how to make this basic, basic bird feeder. Good project for the beginner or, to, or for kids. With the minimum amount of tools required. Going to go into it. Coming up. Before we get going on the build for these, I, I want to point out at the beginning here that this is meant to be a very basic beginner project or something for kids. If you're an experienced woodworker, this is going to bore you to death. I also am doing this without a whole lot of joinery or trimming edges, perfectly square. Uh, as you'll see as we go through this video, the cedar fence planks you get from the home store will not necessarily have all square edges. And that will be reflected in this. I'm not taking the time to plane those down, run them through the joiner, do all that kind of stuff. This is meant to be very basic, very simple, and rustic. And whether you want to finish these or not with some type of finish, it's up to you. It is Western Red Cedar and it will weather outdoors to a great color and it's, it's fine in the weather. So I just wanted to bring that up before we got into the video. I'm Roger, welcome to the shop, and what I'm going to be showing here is how to build a very, very basic bird feeder with a, and I'll show the minimum amount of tools you can do it with. I will of course be using my table saw and my miter saw on that because I have it, but you don't have to have that. So what does the bird feeder look like? Um, you, unless you have a laser engraver, you're not going to be doing this, but you can paint something on there if you like, or a decal or something. I'm going to make one modification when I build this one here, is I'm going to raise the perch up a little bit. Because uh, after playing with this a little it, on the perch, it's a little tough for the birds to be able to reach in when the seed level gets low. This is made out of a cedar fence picket. So, cedar fence pickets, you can get these at your home store. Uh, pick these up at Menards, because that's where I like to shop. A uh, couple of things you need to watch when you're picking one out is try to get the, you won't find one not free, that'd be real hard, but try to find one that's not bowed. This one here has a bow to it, so try to avoid that. Try to avoid anything with a split in it, like this one here has at the top. So for this project, I'm going to be using this one here, and it does have some knots in it. And it try not to get one that's cupped real bad. This was cupped a little, but it's it's not too bad. These are cheap, three dollars and sixty nine cents. So you'll need one of these. Unless you make a mistake, then you might need two. You will need some glue. I use Tight Bond three because it is weatherproof, waterproof for above ground. You don't use it on the bottom of your boat. That's not what it's designed for. You're going to need some nails. <clears throat> I'm using galvanized three penny nails. The D stands for penny if you're new to this. Uh, you don't need to get a big box on you. There's smaller quantities you can get. You will need for power tools. The only one you really need is a drill. It could be a quarter drill. It doesn't have to be a cordless drill. We'll need a couple of drill bits. This one here is an eighth inch bit, which we'll use to drill clearance holes for the nails so that it doesn't split the wood. You'll need a 3 16th or a quarter inch bit to put some drain holes in the bottom. And you'll need a bit to match the dowel that you will need for the perch. And I'm going to be using 3 8 dowels, so I have a 3 8 bit here. Uh, you can get this whole set of Max Belt. Brad Point bits. Brad Point has a point on the very front. These are for wood. Don't be trying to drill steel or metal with these. And it keeps the bit from wandering around when you're so you can get a more precise hole. These sets are inexpensive. They're about ten dollars. Of course, they're made in China, but for if you're just starting out, it's a good way to go. You need a pencil, maybe a couple if you're like me, and they tend to walk away. You'll need something to measure with, tape measure. I also use a ruler, a steel ruler and a little square. These things are handy to have. You don't have to have fancy tools when you're starting out. Uh, this, this is a Stanley ruler. It came out of an old combination square. 
and I keep it on my table so I use it for all kinds of things. It's, it also has metric on it and I do do some work in metric. And these little uh, Empire squares, these are handy. Uh, of course they make bigger ones, but these little uh, six inch squares, combination of squares, are real handy to have. So what else you're going to need? You're going to need a hammer. You're going to have a hammer. Okay, if you don't have power tools, you don't have a table saw, you don't have a chop saw, you can do this entire project with a handsaw. Preferably a sharp one. This one's, I've had this one for years and years. It's not the sharpest thing in the world, but it could be done. You could also do this with a circular saw. You could do it with a jigsaw. You don't have to have a table saw. If you do, it's nice because I'll show you why on a couple of these cuts. Uh, and they're basic cuts. No fancy angles or anything. Everything's just square. But for ripping some of these boards, table saw is nice to have. For cutting the pieces to length, obviously a miter saw, a chop saw is nice to have. If you happen to have one, make use of it. If you're doing this uh, as a project for to get kids into woodworking, maybe Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, or your kids, grandkids, great-grandchildren if you're old enough, you can pre-cut all the pieces and then show them how to go do this as you go. So we're going to get into a couple of uh, details on this as soon as I get some stuff cleaned up here. Okay, these fence pickets are six feet long. You're going to need to cut some 12 inch long pieces. So if you are doing this on a chop saw, you can just make your mark and go on and cut. But if you're doing it with a hand saw or a circular saw or a jig saw, you're going to want to have a good straight line to follow. And the other thing you don't want to do is just start making a bunch of marks 12 inches apart and start cutting on all the lines because you're going to end up off. So I have marked this 12 inches from the end. And when I cut this now, I will cut on this side of the line. And incidentally, if you're using a chop saw, don't just chop it. Ease into that cut or you'll end up with a real jagged edge. So there's my first piece. I need to have five of those. So when you get your five pieces cut, you'll have this left over. That's a little dog-eared end. Don't throw that away. You're going to need it. Okay, I, I guess I should have mentioned earlier that the, uh, what the dimension of this wood is. The cedar fence picket is five and a half inches wide. That's nominal. It could be anywhere from five and a quarter to five and three quarter. It, but normally they're five and a half. Thickness will range anywhere from a half inch to five eighths. And this is what they call rough sawn western red cedar. So at this point you should have these five 12 inch pieces plus your little leftover. Next you need to take two of these pieces and cut them in width down to three and a half on one side. And I'm if you do not have a table saw, you can do that with a circular saw. Be careful. You can obviously do it with a jig saw. You can also do it with a hand saw. If you're in any case, if you're doing it by hand, draw a line so you can stay on that line. Something else I should mention about these uh, cedar fence pickets is that the cut on the edge is not necessarily square. You may end up with a little bit of an angle. In fact, this one here is a uh, about a three degree angle on one side. This is also cut just a little bit, but we'll work through that just fine. So what I'm going to do now is cut two of these pieces down to three and a half inches wide. Of course, I'm going to use a table saw because I have one. So end up with some pieces like this. Don't throw this away. You're going to need it. Okay, the next cut. You're going to take one of your 12 inch pieces and make two rip cuts. That's down the length so that your finished product is two and a half inches wide. 
You need two of those, you can get that out of one of these boards. Yeah, I know you can't see what's going on on that side of the fence. I'm not able to get a camera over there because of this small shop. I can't get in that angle, but <clears throat> you line up in two pieces like this, and for safety's sake, always use a push stick. Okay, our next two cuts. You have this piece left over. It has a little dog ears on it. You want to cut this to eight and a half inches long. Then you're going to need to cut two inch and a quarter or inch and a half. It's up to you. Inch and a quarter is the minimum. Inch and a quarter wide by eight and a half long. Okay, for the perch, I'm using a three-eighths dowel. Hopefully you can find one straighter than this. But I'll use the straight parts of this. I'm using a three-eighths dowel. The uh, holes you drill will depend on what size dowel you use. I wouldn't use anything smaller than a 3 8 but I've got quite a few of these around, especially these ones that have the custom curve in them, and I need to use some of them up. But don't cut this to length yet. That's going to be a, a step much later on when we get a final dimension for the perch. But on these pieces you just cut here, I did mine an inch and a half, eight and a half inches long. We need to do a little layout on those. We need to drill a hole. And I, since I'm using a 3 8 dowel, I'm using a 3 8 bit. So to lay this out, you want to come back one inch from the end on each end. Make your mark. Draw a line. Now you need half that distance. So half of inch and a half is 3 quarter. So you want to make a mark at 3 quarter. You have a little X mark like that. And a three quarter in. Now, using a piece of scrap wood as a backer, you always want to put a backer when you're drilling holes like this or you'll get a bunch of tear out on the back. So I get a scrap of wood here. The brad point bit, as I mentioned, has this little point on the end so you can line it up perfect. See, no tear out when you put a backer on there. Just like that. And there's our perch supports. Okay, now for assembly, take one of your five and a half by 12 inch pieces. You'll need to mark in one inch on each end. These are going to be your reference marks for putting your walls up because these are the end pieces and they will fit right between those marks, like so. So the next thing you're going to want to do is come in a quarter of an inch. Make a little line there between your marks. Then using an eighth inch drill bit,
you want to drill three holes in there, and that's clearance for the nail because cedar splits very easily. So come in about a half inch from each one of your end marks. Drill in that line, then put one in the middle. Do the same thing on the other end. Now you need to repeat this process on your remaining five and a half inch wide by 12 inch board. That'll be the roof. Okay, next you're going to take one of your one by fours, or what I call a one by four. It's not. It's three and a half inches wide. It's 12 inches long. You need to apply some glue to one end. Spread it out evenly. Now you want to put this between your marks. And there's a couple different ways to do this. Of course, you can't just lay it down unless you had a one inch spacer under there. What I like to do is stand it up, line my marks, and bring it up square. Make sure you're flush at the end. And I'm nailing right into a knot. How about that? Things don't always work out like you think they're going to. Okay, if that should happen to you, you'll have to drill a clearance hole for that as well. So I'm going to go around and do the other two first now, then we'll come back to that one. Now we'll do the same thing at the other end, hopefully without a knot. <clears throat> Just align my marks and stand it up. If you have some glue squeeze out, which is a good thing, just wipe it off. So now we'll take our other piece, which we have our marks on here and lined up. We'll apply glue to the, these two top surfaces and put this on there and nail it on. This piece has a little crown to it, as you can see here, so I'm actually going to put this side up. That way it'll help water run off. So this is very basic beginner. And with that deal with that knot, yes, I could have edited that whole thing out, but I'm going to show you that not everything works perfect every time.
So we have something here that looks something like a box. Okay, the next step here will be to put our feeder tray where the seeds, the bird seed will be. That will be these uh, wider pieces here like this. The narrow pieces are for up here at the top. So, but we got to use for those in order to be able to nail this easily. Set those down and set your bird feeder on top of them. That gives you good support while you're nailing on this surface right here. So you'll need to do the same thing here. You'll need to mark back a quarter of an inch, both ends, drill three holes. Same thing on the other end. Another knot. And on the back side of your piece here, apply some glue on both ends. That piece just sits right there like that. Another knot. I'm good at finding the knots here. Okay, you'll see there's just a little bit of a crack there. That's to allow any water that gets in there to run out. So now you just flip this over. Of course, you can take one of those out now because you got a support down there. And do the same thing. Okay, down to the next step here would be the pieces that go across the top. They'll look like this, except I took a little bit of time and laser engraved a couple pieces. This is actually for my great granddaughter. These will go here, space a half inch down from the top. So a good way to do that is to take a scrap or a piece that you, for instance, this is our perch pieces. You can use that to get your spacing. You'll need to drill a couple little holes in the ends of each one, quarter inch back. Space them evenly apart. That way the wood will not split. Apply some glue to the back. Get it set in place. Whoops. More glue than where I wanted it there. Your other piece of wood for a spacer. It's just spacing down where you want it. You can also measure this and make a mark. Both will work out the same. Make sure you're flush to the end. And incidentally, if you're going to decorate this top piece, I would sand it first. This has obviously been sanded before I laser engraved it. But you could uh, sand that and you could paint something on there, or you could just leave it rough cut as it was. All right, our next thing is to put the perches on. For this, you'll have your piece here. And you will want to get this flush with the top right here. Bring that up flush. Yeah, you see a little gap down here, that's because this edge is not cut straight from the factory or from the mill. But that's okay, this is meant to be a rustic looking unit. 
So how far out to space this? An inch and an inch and seven eighths on each side. You want to make a couple little marks here. You have drilled some pilot holes for your nails so you don't split anything. Apply a little glue. Well, you want to put your nails into these end boards. Don't try to go through here because the nail will go all the way through. You'll flip it over to the same thing on the other side. Okay, next we need to cut our dowels for our perches. And to do that, the reason we didn't pre-cut them was because the thickness of these things can vary. So we want this to be 13 and 1 8th. So I'll cut a couple of dowels, 13 and 1 8th. Guess I should make sure the other side's the same. And it is. So I'll cut a couple of 13 and 1 8th dowels and I'll show you how to stick them in. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. You slide your dowel in from one end. So it's flush at both ends there like that. Stand it up. And right over the top of where your dowel passes through, drill an eighth inch hole. It, just so it starts into the dowel. Don't get carried away there and drill all the way through. And it's best if you have something to back this up underneath. You're going to be pounded on that a little. That'll keep the dowel from moving. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, and lastly, if you want to hang this up, you'll need to put a screw eye in the center. Or you need, if you're going to mount it on a post, you'll need to uh, have some holes here. It just depends how you want to hang it. Another way would be to put an eye on each end with something up in the middle. I'll leave all that up to you. Okay, if you do want to hang this from the center, and that's the way I, I did this other one over here. The way to, easiest way to find the center is take some type of straight edge, go from corner to corner, and somewhere close to the center there, make just a light pencil mark. I do the same thing the other direction. Where the two lines cross right there is the center. I have a screw eye here I'm going to put in. So all I'll do is do a, just a little bit of a starting hole right on that center mark. Just enough to get it started a little bit. And I can take my screw eye, and it's best if you use one that's galvanized. This one's just zinc plated so it'll probably rust. And you can just screw that eye in there. Like so, that's if you're going to hang it from the center. So there we have it, a very basic, very easy to build, rustic bird feeder. So what do you put in here? Well, bird seed, well, yeah. Um, I'm specifically going to use this with uh, sunflower seed. 
for Cardinals. My great granddaughter loves to watch the Cardinals and we have a lot of them around here and they have a lot of them around her house. That's why we have two of these bird feeders. No, this is not fine woodworking. Yes, there's a lot of things you could do to make this a lot neater. Uh, for example, on these edges here from the factory, on the factory pickets that are not smooth, but not necessarily cut straight. You can see in places because of that there's some little gaps. Yes, you could if you want to take the time to even that out, you most certainly could. But this is meant to be a very simple project for either the beginning woodworker or something for some kids to do. Uh, it's also inexpensive. The cedar picket was three dollars and sixty-nine cents. If you buy this eye, you can get a package of them for a dollar. Uh, you'll need some of the three penny nails, you need some glue. You'll need a dowel. This dowel was, I think was 99 cents for a four foot length of three eighths dowel. Yeah, you'll need a couple drill bits and that type of thing. But if you want to get some children interested in this, in woodworking and something they can build themselves, uh, adults should be cutting the parts if you're using power tools, of course. But you could have the parts pre-cut for them and show them how to do this. No, there's no written plans for this. Um, I did mention all the dimensions as we went through the video, so you could go back and uh, jot those down if you like. Uh, this is not etched in stone. You could make this shorter if you wanted to. You could make it taller. You could make it longer. You could make it wider. You could do whatever you like. But I wanted to do everything out of one fence picket, and this did it. The uh, leftover piece was very small. Um, if you have a problem with getting pickets that have too many defects in them, you may need to buy two so you can cut around the defects. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Otherwise, I'm Roger in the shop. Basic birdhouse for the beginner kids. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.